What is up guys, Sean here, and today we have a very, very, very special video for you guys today, and it's a special because we're doing an unboxing, because I just got a package, and you guys gotta see what it is. Uh, so let's take this, uh, this thing out, we, we, we unwrap it here, and you see, it's my Lord Fauci candle. You see, what a lot of people don't realize is that even though I'm on the right, I'm very, very, very pro-science. And that's why I've decided to deify a government employee with this Fauci, St. Lord Fauci candle. So we're going to light it up. We're going to see how amazing it is. And it's just going to be a permanent part of my set forever. I've ordered 10,000 of them, so we'll light a new one at the start of every video from here on out. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, that's a little hot. There we go, there we go. There we go, St. Fauci watching over us till the end of time. Oh, hold on. I think I got an alert. Oh my God! <laughs> okay, so surprisingly, wearing this many masks for a video is far more uncomfortable than I expected. But as you guys can probably surmise, today we're going to be talking about the Anthony Fauci email leaks or BuzzFeed obtaining Anthony Fauci's emails through a Freedom of Information Act request. And honestly, as ridiculous as this candle is, it actually smells fantastic. So I'm gonna link the native artist who made this on Etsy, even though I bought it on Amazon, in the description below if you want to get one of these because it actually smells pretty good. I mean, all hail Lord Fauci, hallow be his name, even though what we determined from these emails is that Fauci is a scientist and thus is fallible, and it appears that he was misleading the public through certain aspects of the coronavirus, but more importantly, it appears, like most government officials, that Fauci was more interested in covering his own backside. But to fully understand this story, we really have to discuss the climate in which coronavirus actually appeared on planet Earth and in the United States of America, and how the media was treating the alleged Wuhan lab theory of how this virus got out into the world. Now, I'm gonna give you the basics of what we knew at the time, and I'm gonna let you guys assess if somebody said this was likely not the case, if this still counts as a conspiracy theory. So, we know the species of bat more or less that the coronavirus appeared to have originated from. We know more or less that the coronavirus appeared in Wuhan in China. We know that the origin point and where this bat was native is something like a thousand miles apart, and it's very unlikely that a bat infected with the strain that would make the jump to humans would fly a thousand miles to Wuhan and then start the pandemic. Surely people would have been infected along that route if it were even possible for that bat to have flown that far. We also know that in Wuhan, and this is what we knew at the time, there was an Institute of Virology and it was called the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And in that institute, they were studying coronaviruses, specifically coronaviruses coming from bats specifically at that lab. Now we also know that the alleged wet market, which supposedly was the origin point for the virus, actually sold seafood, so it's unlikely bats were sold because they're not from the ocean. Now you combine all of this and you add in that the Chinese government is a hostile communist government to the United States of America. And one of the biggest problems with a communist government among many gigantic problems is this refusal to ever acknowledge a problem. Usually it is treated in these nations when you bring up a problem, like you are creating a problem. So there's incentive from the top down to cover things up. So all that combined would lead the lay person or even somebody with like borderline above average IQ to think that it was at least a possibility that the virus, maybe not purposely, but accidentally, was released from the Wuhan Institute. We also have reports now, again, this was not at the time, but we have reports now of scientists that worked there that were infected weeks prior to the Chinese confirming the existence of the virus. So the theory now has become more plausible, but even back then we had whistleblowers talking about how the Chinese government appeared to be covering this up. And there were some people who died. I'm not saying that they were killed or anything like that. I don't want to get into conspiratorial territory, 
But you can see how all of this added up at the time to point to this lab as the origin point. On top of that, you had the Trump administration saying that this was likely the origin point. So what did the media do in response to this? They treated it like a conspiracy theory. In fact, a bunch of media outlets labeled this, and journalists as well, a racist conspiracy theory. Because somehow, all of the things that I listed and explained to you add up to just anti-Chinese racism, even though if all these factors were present in a country, no matter the demographic of people, we would consider this a likely possibility. Can you imagine if this was in a European country, how the woke journalists would be responding and be accusing the UK government or whatever European country that's largely white of lying and covering this up if all these factors were in play? But no, it was treated like racism. It was treated like a conspiracy theory, despite the fact that it's not that big of a logical leap. I'm not saying it 100% happened, but it's not that big of a logical leap. Now, chief among the people who were claiming that the virus was completely natural and that there was no real evidence or indication at all whatsoever that the virus possibly was altered or was released from the Wuhan lab was Dr. Anthony Fauci. The man, the myth, the legend, the saint, the Lord that should govern over us all. Which brings us to the BuzzFeed Freedom of Information Act request which obtained 2,000 emails from Dr. Anthony Fauci. And it turns out that while Fauci was telling the public that it was very unlikely and the virus looked really natural and it probably didn't come from the lab, in private, he was actually examining this and he was worried about the possibility that not only did the virus originate from the lab, but the virus, through a subsidiary, might have been partially funded through gain-of-function research from his department. Now, the first email that is gaining a lot of attention and should be concerning to the American public is an email sent to Dr. Anthony Fauci from a doctor named Christian Anderson, who talked about examining the virus and its sequences, and what this doctor ended up finding was that 0.1% of the virus looked like it was either created or altered in some unnatural way. I will read you from the email so you can get what I'm saying. On a phylogenic tree, the virus looks totally normal, and the close clustering with bats suggests that bats serve as the reservoir, Anderson wrote. The unusual features of the virus make up a really small part of the genome, sub 0.1%. So one has to look really closely at all the sequences to see that some of the features potentially look engineered. Now again, on its own, even though it was downplayed into the media, this is actually not that big of a deal because scientists can disagree on things. By the way, to people who unironically buy these Lord Fauci candles that lionize the man as a saint, scientists can disagree on things. It's okay to question scientists and it's okay definitely to question government officials. However, things get into a little bit sketchy territory for Anthony Fauci when this topic turns to gain-of-function research, because there are two emails, and again, this is a small portion of the 2000, that reference this specifically, and it appears to show that Fauci was at least concerned privately that the U.S. government might have played a role in funding this type of research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So in an email written to Hugh Ochinuklas, can't pronounce that name, sorry dude, of the NIAID, Fauci passes along documents that pertain to gain of function research. Quote, Hugh, it is essential that we speak about this AM, I'm assuming that's in the morning, Fauci wrote, keep your cell phone on, Read this paper as well as the email that I will forward you now. You will have tasks today that must be done. Now, what's really striking about this email is the attachment that Fauci linked to this email. It's a paper that I believe came out in 2015 entitled, A SARS-like cluster of circulating bat coronaviruses shows potential for human emergence. One of the paper's authors, who is known as the Bat Lady said, who works at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Fauci also sent this paper to the National Institutes of Health Deputy Director Lawrence Tabak. To reply to Fauci later that day, it says, the paper you sent me says the experiments were performed before the gain of function pause in 2014 but have since been reviewed and approved by NIH. Not sure what that means since Emily is sure that no coronavirus work has gone through the P3 framework 
She will try to determine if we have any distant ties to this work abroad. Okay, Fauci answered. Now what's very crucial about these emails, which by the way, some of them are still classified, so we don't know what's said in those other classified emails, is that there's a distinction between what Dr. Anthony Fauci was saying publicly and privately. And one of these distinctions is technically probably against the law, although when I watched the testimony of Anthony Fauci before Congress, I realized that he was parsing his words incredibly carefully. You see, Dr. Rand Paul actually asked Dr. Anthony Fauci specifically about the paper that Fauci attached to these emails related to gain-of-function research and to the idea that the United States of America, specifically the offices that Fauci works for, might have funneled money through a third party that ended up doing gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And again, this is not a crazy conspiracy theory. Another thing that has recently resurfaced is an op-ed written by Dr. Anthony Fauci himself where he says that he is strongly in favor of gain-of-function research. And even if that gain-of-function research causes something to leak out and cause a global pandemic, he still would support it because that's how committed to the idea that there's knowledge to be gained from gain-of-function research. Now look, I'm trying to be as specific as possible with what I'm telling you here and stick only to the facts and only reference speculation that is kind of easy to reference that is not necessarily delving into the conspiratorial world. And the reason for that is because there are logical explanations for the inconsistencies from Anthony Fauci that don't necessarily lead to him covering up the virus or trying to tank Trump or whatever extra things that are stacked on top of what we're talking about with the emails. Dr. Anthony Fauci has been in government for something like 40 years. He's the highest paid federal government employee. You don't get there without being just as much of a bureaucrat as an expert in whatever field you're supposed to be in. So what this looks like to me is somebody who's concerned about covering his own backside, not somebody who's conspiring with the Chinese government or whatever. It's also somebody who seems to believe in the scientific process that scientists are somehow above nations, because in a lot of instances when Fauci is pressed or questioned on this, he seems to say, well, I'm taking the word not of the Chinese government, but of the scientists themselves that are in China that are clearly under the control of the Chinese government. But Fauci doesn't believe that. He doesn't acknowledge it. He thinks that the science is above that, which I think is incredibly naive and incredibly ridiculous. This idea that scientists or government officials in any nation don't have their own political positions, they don't have their own agendas, they don't have bureaucratic tendencies, is absolutely ridiculous. And I think the overall lesson from this is that we should never give in to censorship because social media outlets were cramming down their censorship and a lot of them might have been doing so at the behest of Anthony Fauci. We have yet to see the Facebook emails between Zuckerberg and Fauci because they thought it was the right thing to do because if conspiracies proliferated, that would be a problem. News organizations and journalists were punished for looking into an obvious line of speculation as the media was deferring to the government, an unelected bureaucrat who supposedly, according to himself, is the master of all science. Disagreeing with him is disagreeing with science. And that's not a joke. He literally said that. Me, quite frankly, are attacks on science because all of the things that I have spoken about consistently from the very beginning have been fundamentally based on science. Sometimes those things were inconvenient truths for people, and there was pushback against me. So if you are trying to do, you know, get at me as a public health official and a scientist, you're really attacking not only Dr. Anthony Fauci, you're attacking science. And anybody that looks at what's going on clearly sees that. You have to be asleep not to see that. That is what's going on. Science and the truth are being attacked. So while that clip is incredibly creepy and it goes to show you the ego that is on this man that has been deified by a certain portion of this country, I think it's more important that we again focus on the lessons I talked about earlier. We should not, through fear, give up all of our judgment to the experts. We should listen to the experts. We should definitely examine what they say. We should definitely seek out other opinions. We should definitely seek out opinions from foreign experts 
because they might be doing something different. But we definitely shouldn't defer completely, cancel all of our judgment, cancel all of our critical thought to people that purport to be experts, especially if they're in government. The lesson of this as always, is that we should have a healthy distrust of the government. That doesn't mean that we should seek out conspiracy theories on Facebook from a random nurse in whatever state that has no qualifications in what she's talking about. What it means is that we should mature as a people and be able to encounter and deal with new information. We should assess our own risk to a certain extent and defer for the experts what is above our pay grade, but constantly pay attention to what they're doing and acknowledge that they too might be vulnerable to having an agenda that doesn't necessarily align with best practices. Again, I will be following up on the story as best as I can. I'm hopeful that the Zuckerberg Fauci emails will actually get out so that we can find out if these social media giants were actually acting on behalf of government entities in order to suppress speech on their platforms. But until then, let's not do this thing where we worship an unelected government bureaucrat. Let's not do this thing where we pretend that science is a religion and deify the figures of that religion. Let's go back to sensible policy making and let's go back to being sensible where we worship democratically elected officials like Andrew Cuomo, who I just got during the course of this video, his St. Cuomo candle, because Cuomo, he's the real president. Cuomo knows what's going on. He's he's sticking it to Trump. He's he's really, really nailing it. I, I could have done an unboxing for this, but honestly, like, you know, I, you don't need two unboxing for the same video. All hail St. Cuomo. Never let us astray. He's gonna he's gonna go right next to Anthony Fauci, but he's gonna be a little closer to the camera because because Cuomo is elected and, and therefore he's he's better than Anthony Fauci. Mm. Oh, hold, hold on. Ah, oh, oh, God, and Andrew, no. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't heard, on Friday, June 11th, I will be on the Modern Day Debates channel. I believe the time is 8 p.m. Eastern. I will be debating Destiny, a chick called Victoria Hammett, and one other mystery guest that will, in fact, has been confirmed to me to be a lefty. So it's going to be at least three on one, even though the moderator is a progressive. So it might be a four on one. And honestly, they don't stand a chance. If you like the video, then show me by leaving a like. If you want, you can subscribe for more content. You can support me via the support links. That goes to finance things like Anthony Cuomo and Tony Fauci. I totally messed up those names. It's Andrew and Anthony Fauci. <laughs> Candles. But yeah, link, links in the description if you want to do that. Till next time.